Okay, we're going to do a little video on the uh, ink birds that are controlling the ashing on this Axeman Anderson 130M here. So that's them there. The one on the left for, for the ash is an ITC 106 VH. The one on the right is a ITC 106 RH. The difference is the RH on the right has an internal relay and the VH on the left has and uses an external relay. So, so that's the only real difference between them. The menus are the same. So the first thing you gotta look at is this menu tree here. Basically what we're gonna do is you need to go into the IP menu and make sure SN is set to Y. Y is a K-type thermocouple, and that's what most of these come with, so that's what you want. SC is, um, if you find that your thermocouple is not quite, quite reading right, you can set an offset range in here, and that way you can have your gauge read properly. Not going to worry about digital filtering. Once you go through this menu, it'll pop you back out here again, and you'll go to the OP menu, which is the output setting. And for, for this control, we're not going to use PID mode. It'll be set in PID mode from the factory. So you need to go into this menu and change it to on off. And once you set that, you hit set again. That will pop you down to HC, which for the ashing control you're going to use, you're going to set it on heat, and for the stack temperature inhibit, you're going to set it on cool. And then you, uh, this doesn't really matter, the run mode, that'll pop you back out here. And that's really all you got to do. I mean, every time you press set, you'll go down one of these main parts of the menu unit you might want to go into because sometimes they're set for centigrade and if you want it in Fahrenheit you'll have to switch it to Fahrenheit and then you hit set and then you're back out again so stand up here and uh, have a look at this thing to get into the menu we'll do the ashing one first hold the set button down for three seconds now you're in the one IP menu. If you press the left arrow, there you are. We, we are in Y, which is a K thermocouple. You can change it through. There's a chart in the instructions that tells you what means what. But we want, we want Y. Press set. SC, we do not have a... Uh, Offset programmed in. DL, we don't care. And that's it for that one. OP, hit the left menu button. Control on off. So you could have this in ATR or PID mode, but we want it in on off. We have this one set for heat, but you could set it for cool or heat. Don't really mess with that at all. And then you're back out of the operations mode. These are this that's the alarm menu. Whoops. Didn't really want to do that. <laughs> that's the alarm menu. If you want to go in there, this sets. There's another relay in here that you can use for the alarm mode too. If you wanted to use that for something. And that's that. PID mode, we're not setting it in PID mode. If you go in there, it shows you all the PID parameters. And this is unit. So if we went in here, it's in Fahrenheit. C, Fahrenheit, centigrade, Fahrenheit. We're leaving it in Fahrenheit. So that's that. There we go. And if you want to set the temperature, just hit the up button. Then 
you can navigate through here and change it to whatever you want. We want it at 125, so that's where we'll leave it. And that's that. Now this one is pretty much the same deal. Go in there, we uh, press the arrow. We have it set for Y. Y. Y is where we want to be. Now on this one, on the stack, for some reason, we've got a pretty big offset on what our barbecue thermometer says and what this says. So I have a 40 degree plus offset in here just to keep it keep them reading the same at around the set point. It actually it doesn't track right. I'm not sure why, but I changed the thermocouple on this this unit and I changed the barbecue thermo thermometer too. So <laughs> not sure why it does that, but that's what it's doing. Look through this again. DL we don't use. IP. Oh, shoot, already been through here. OP. Yeah, again, you don't want it to be in, in R, AT, or PID for this particular application. You want it to be an on off. And for this one, we're using it on cool because we want it to turn on. We want the relay inside here to turn on as when the temperature rises and hits the set point. You could leave it in heat, I think, if you use the normally closed connection on the relay. We're using the normally open one, so we're going to put it in cool. Run mode and auto. I don't know if that makes any difference. That's the alarm menu again. We're not using the alarms. PID, we're not using PID. And our unit is set to Fahrenheit. F, right? Right. And that's that. And you set the uh, set point the same way. You know, you can go up. You can go down. I want this at 170. There's one other option you can use in here is if you actually go into, I think it's the PID menu. Yeah, I might be wrong. It might be the alarm menu. ID. Yeah, it's the alarm menu. So if you go into the alarm menu, high limit and low limit on the alarm, differential high and low limit on the alarm, and DF. We have this set at 0.5. From the factory they come at 0.3. And that is the hysteresis. Effectively, it's the differential. It's like how far it will go before it actually does anything. So with it at 0.5 and having the set point at 170 degrees, really it'll activate when it gets to 170.5 degrees. And that's that. It's, it's not really, you set them really low for the ashing and the stack temperature on the uh, boiler control I've been playing with it really you want it at like 10 degrees but that's a whole other story not really necessary for for what we're doing as you can see right now the ashing temperature this this just came on it's actually running right now the fan is just running right now because it's actually in stack temperature inhibit right now so the ash temperature has dropped below the set point, so the output is activated on this one, but the stack temperature, did I say that right? The, the ash temperature is below 
with 125 degree set point. So this relay is activated. These two relays are in series. The stack temperature has not reached the 170 degree set point yet. But it will in a few seconds and once it does this little red light will come on. The relay will activate and then the uh, the, the auger will start turning and the solenoid will activate. So what that means is the solenoid here will make a loud clank noise as it kicks this lever out. And also the auger motor will start spinning. At 169.1 and since we have the 0.5 degree differential it has to go to 170.5 degrees. So that will take a few seconds. Better late than never. So now the auger is running. It's ashing, and everybody's happy, including the cat. Aren't you happy? Glad to have a boiler running out here in the garage. Keep the kitty nice and warm. Okay, so that's that. That's how, brief description of how you program your ink birds. You can tell what kind of ink bird you have if you look on the side of it. It has a little diagram of how it's wired, and this is the model number. This one's an ITC 106VH. I think I got that backwards when I described it before. This is the VH, this is the RH. RH has an internal relay, the VH uses an external relay. And that's that.